We're just over 24 hours away from fight night here in Newcastle at the Into Metro Centre. A couple of miles west of where we'll be tomorrow night. I'm Chris Lloyd with me, Darren Barker. And Darren, already a huge buzz around this event. And yesterday's press is a perfect way to just build that, on that excitement. Oh, that's great. Look, look the, uh, the Geordies are out in force at the Into Shopping Centre. It's, uh, it's a great buzz here. And they're, yeah. they're all here to get behind their man Ritson. I mean, uh, I'm really looking forward to tomorrow night. It's good times for them, isn't it? Because as we spoke about yesterday, and as we'll talk about a little bit more yeah. on tomorrow's show, there's a great new young crop of Newcastle fighters coming through. Northeast fighters in general, some of the amateurs, some of the pros, Josh Kelly, Lewis Ritson. Um, and to have a stadium of 9,000 people tomorrow night, all shouting for one person, that's going to be absolutely It's amazing. incredible. I mean, they really do have their box office star now, don't they? Lewis Ritson, he's so exciting. He's, uh, he's the... You wouldn't say the finished article, no. the finished package, but he's got a bit of everything. You know, he can punch, he can box. Uh, it's sometimes a little, frag uh, I wouldn't say fragile, vulnerable. You so know, he certainly he, gets hit. He gets, he gets hit, shot, but, yeah. you know, there's stuff to work on, but he's so exciting. Mm -hmm. I mean, he really is the, the Geordie Triple G, if you like. I suppose that's part of the reason why he, he's sort of exploded in, in a short space yeah. of time that he has as well. Well, it, it's excitement. You know, we, we, we want to see action yeah. and he brings it every single time he fights. He brings it. You know, he might take a couple to land one. He's uh, he's super exciting. He can punch. He's got, like I say, he's got a bit of everything. You know, I'm, I'm a big fan. And he's a lovely lad. Isn't he he is a lovely lad. It tells you everything about his popularity that when you look around here I and mean, you guys might not be able to see this at home. We've got a full 360 balcony yeah. all the way around. There's people everywhere, as far as the eye can see, all along the floor here. All for, all for kind of a, a Geordie that really a year ago, almost no one was talking it's about. It's incredible. And I'll tell you what, there really are fight fans, the Geordies up here. I mean, I mean, they're even asking me for photos. <laughs> <laughs> That's how but, low it's got, yeah. But no, <laughs> yeah. But no, 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 it's, uh, it's fantastic. I mean, look, as far as I can see, yeah. it goes back. I mean, yeah, it's filling up here. It's, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited, mate. I really am. I'm, I'm excited. And I've just seen Boatsy walking around, and he's very smart because he's gone white and black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've just said, that for Newcastle? He said, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Well, he was, a, he was a popular guy at the uh, press. I've just seen a couple of shots of the outside. He's so happy yeah. that he's here. Um, but yeah, some really likeable fighters on the card. They're all in the pen. That's the one thing about boxers. They're notoriously not great timekeepers, but because everyone wants to get the way in done, they want to get rehydrated. Yeah, everyone yeah. is on time on oh, the Oh, it's great. So yeah, like Chris said, there's like there's a pen just behind us over there where all the boxers are held. So they're all in there growling at each other. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it's good. That's awesome. Well, listen, we won't delay them anymore. Our man, David Diamante, is standing by ready to take us through the proceedings at the way-in. And I'll hand you over to him right now. David, take it away. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome to Newcastle for the official weigh-in for tomorrow night's huge night of fights taking place here at the Metro Radio Arena. It's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn's Matchroom Boxing. It'll be broadcast live here in the UK exclusively on Sky Sports and streamed in the US exclusively live on DAZN. It's all being brought to you courtesy of William Hill, JD Sports, and... StubHub. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a big night of fights. We're going to go ahead and start this weigh-in. We're going to bring up all the, fighter, the uh, fighters for the first bout. It's a four-round welterweight affair. It'll be contested at 10 and a half stone or 147 pounds. Introducing up first, he's a 24-fight veteran hailing from Sofia, Bulgaria. Please welcome to the scale, Angel Emilov. Great, thank you. And his opponent, ladies and gentlemen, he's the five-time Northern Area Amateur Champion as a professional. His record is perfect, 4-0 from Spennymore, Chad Ellis. First to the scale, Angel Emilov. Ten stone, twelve pounds for Emma Love. Ten stone, twelve pounds. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Spennymore, the undefeated Chad Ellis. Ten stone, nine pounds. 
Ten stone, nine pounds for Ellis. Ten stone, nine pounds for Ellis. So, Darren, it all starts uh, tomorrow on Sky Sports, 7 o'clock. We've got, I think, 13 or 14 fights on the bill, so not all of those will be televised. But for the fans actually going, they've got a real big chunk of boxing. It's like, yes, yeah. there's a bit of criticism about, you know, same, people saying on the Wembley card, there's only three, four or five fights. This one, jam-packed. And it's good for some of the local guys to be getting a show as well in front of their fans. Of course fans. it is. I mean, look, like you say, 9,000 banged out uh, for these young lads. Uh, that have only had a handful of fights. What a great experience it is for them. You know, I mean, it really does hold you in good stead moving forward because one day, you know, they want to emulate Ritson and become top of the bill themselves. So, yeah, it does help. That experience certainly helps. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's, it's the noise in there is going to be electric and uh, we'll just see these going head to head here. And also for these guys, the first time they would have had this kind of weighing yeah, in front yeah. of a crowd of people because there's so many times you weigh in in the early stages of your career and you're just weighing in in, in a small room so there's a handful of, of officials. people yeah, yeah exactly there's a handful of people but you know this is a, a banged out shopping Angel centre and it just yeah, shows you again night, what boxing, boxing means to this to, to, to this you know city I mean it's, it's a huge fight band, uh, fight city like I say and um, yeah look, I mean they're out on forces on Friday Friday afternoon and it's buzzing Five pounds. Introducing first to the scale, please welcome from Paris, France, Cédou Sal. Ten and eight, two draws, four knockouts. Cédou Sal. Um, Darren Boatsy, 14. 12 stone, 9 three pounds for Sal. Ago. 12 stone, 9 pounds Kind of a slightly Sal. ambiguous finish because Boatsy stopped him, it looked like, in the sixth round. And now, right ladies at the end, and gentlemen, six please round, welcome but. to the scale. The former ABA middleweight champion, 21 and 1 with 10 knockouts, fighting out of Manchester. The former British light heavyweight champion, Jose the Hammer Burton. So it'll be quite interesting because we were talking yesterday about the comparisons people are going to make between uh, Boazzi and Yard in terms of the Tony Avalan performance tomorrow night. But also be interesting to see how Jose Burton yeah. deals with Saidu Sal because as Boazzi, as he showed against Boazzi, he can box, he can fight, 12 stone, he's tough, he went six rounds with Josh. So, Burton. you know, it's potentially an opportunity it's for, great for Burton to This is a very good test for him. And he, he looks extremely focused. Just seeing him on the scales there and seeing him yesterday. You know, there's, there's a look in his eyes. He, he really means business. I think he's, uh, night, he really wants to make a statement. Off the fighters. He's just had a little bit of time off, hasn't he, Burton, as well. He, he's, you know, he's been kind of under the radar since that loss to Frank Bullione a little while ago. And really yeah. just now it's his time to, to kind of come back and remind everyone that he's still here and he's just, still a force. Just make, a, make or break. You know, you don't get many second chances in boxing. Mm. Um, and he's had his, I guess you, you could say he's had his chance. Uh, well, you know, he's, he had that setback and now he's got really got to push on. Um, he doesn't want to hang about. You can see, like I say, the look in his eyes, he, he means business. So there they are, just final face down in a few moments time. Side with Sal and Jose Burton. It's not for the shy, is it? Uh, a weigh in like this, you know? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Taking your clothes off in front of uh, hundreds of people. <laughs> There's a bit of verbal going on here. Yeah. Six uh, rounds light heavyweights tomorrow night, ladies and gentlemen, Burton and Sal. A uh, respectful guy, Sidi Sal, as he was last time. Looking boxing. forward to that one tomorrow. That was the first smile I've seen Hosea Burton crack in the last couple of days. Quite serious, isn't he? Yeah, he's contest, been very serious. Six rounds light heavyweights contested at 12 and a half stone or 175 pounds. Introducing first to the stage and to the scale from Accra, Ghana. He's the former two-time Commonwealth Super Middleweight Champion, Charles the Crusader Adamu. Charles Adamu. He's making his way to the scales from Accra. Same 32 and 10. He's got Town 25 Joshua. wins born in by knockout. Yeah. The capital. Crusader now to the scale. He looks like a hardened veteran, doesn't yeah, he? Doesn't he? Does. <laughs> yeah. Twelve stone, seven pounds for Adamu. Twelve stone, seven pounds. 
And now, ladies and gentlemen, his opponent, the former Team GB podium boxer, his professional record, perfect. 5-0, and oh, one knockout, Lawrence Osuweki. Lawrence is another interesting one, Darren. He's kind of been floating around the, the GB podium potential squad on and off the squad for a number of years. Just was kept out by a couple of really decent operators in yeah. his weight. And that's not, that's not easy, is it? Because sometimes you're looking at you know, the major championships that are your opportunity to, to kind of turn over and, and make a statement. And you can only send one fighter from each weight division to those championships. Like Lawrence, who a lot of people won't have known until he turned professional, has to wait in the wings and, and have to wait for their time to shine. So again, another one looking forward to, to making a statement. Tomorrow. And he looks in great nick. But going back to that, it just shows you the strength uh, that we've got on the, the podium team and the GB squad. It's just, you know, the, the talent is unreal. Uh, and you're keeping, you know, talented fighters like the, him out of the team just shows you the depth and strength that we have. Yeah, he's been doing a lot of boxing on the uh, on the kind of European circuit, going to things like the Tama tournament in Finland, some yeah. Bulgarians. I mean, you've done all of that as an amateur yeah. as well. Six rounds That's a great basis. Night upon which to build as a, as a professional. Absolutely. Well. Like, again, I can't keep Sponsored touching on you know, the, the thousands of people that are going to be in attendance. That experience moving forward really does help you. Because one thing as an amateur, you know, no doubt you can box, he's very talented, but one thing you, you can never be prepared for is the volume of people, you know, the, the huge numbers in attendance. And, you know, to have this so early on in his career, I really, really will help him. Well, you, you timed that really well because whoever was in charge of our cameras then just panned around the uh, the top layer, the top balcony of uh, I'm the I'm a professional. <laughs> I'm a pro. <laughs> yeah, he looks in terrific shape there, doesn't he, Lawrence? Also, okay. Veteran Charles Adamo is his opponent tomorrow night. He, he looks hard, doesn't he? He looks old, but he looks hard. He does, yeah. <laughs> Tomorrow night, ladies and gentlemen, the Crusader and Osuweki. Six rounds, light heavyweights, Metro Radio, Radio Arena here in Newcastle. I mean, it's a great, a great moment. Next this. contest, four rounds, getting on the scales. It really is. 135 pounds. Introducing first, please welcome. This gentleman to the stage fighting out of Worcester, Worcestershire, UK, the madman, Michael Mooney. David Diamante Michael still Mooney. getting to grips with the weirdness <laughs> yeah. of our language. You, you forget how weird it is until you, you get Americans yeah. to come over to try and, uh, to try and pronounce it. It's great, isn't it? But going back to uh, the, the weighing, uh, for some of these fighters, they're losing, you know, a stone, stone and a half. So to get on these scouts, it's almost half the battle. Is it a relief when oh, you, you so see it, the numbers really come up relief, you want to see? Yeah. You know, and it's a bit of a nightmare in here because I've seen the Krispy Kremes uh, stand <laughs> over there. There's milkshake stands everywhere. So. And you can see um, Jose Burton came up in pair of his tracks at the bottom so you can see how loose they were on his legs yeah. and his, nice his hips and that kind of says it all really because you know what it's like when you've you got a kind of pair of pair of sort of trousers that well, fit well and then suddenly they're loose and that tells you all you need to know exactly undefeated as a professional 3-0-1 oh please welcome as a former north league footballer darren ray we've got some mackums in the house they were, they were even in full voice at the presser. You don't <laughs> often hear cheers at a press conference, do you? No, you don't. I couldn't believe You know, it really was a turnout yesterday at the presser. Nine stone, nine pounds for Ray. Nine stone, nine pounds for Ray. So the hard work done for Ray off to off the rehydrate no doubt what did you used to do to kind of refuel what was your, you know what? What was your food was, of choice uh, <laughs> it was the one time I used to train so hard but it was the one time that I wasn't that professional straight after the weigh in you know some people approach the, the, the weight making differently some crash it at the last minute but it was a gradual thing for me so I had to cut out a lot early Dimitro. on Dimitro so Ray, I would just, I crave off. chips, I crave milkshakes. Oh, it was, really? uh, yeah, I, I pigged out. What was the most and you ever kind of put on? You think a stone. Really? A stone, okay. yeah. The stone before breakfast the next day. 14 pounds. And it was okay. no good, but 
in my later fights when I was more professional, it was about seven pounds, and that was, you know. Did you ever find you kind of went, when you when you were a stone over, what, what effect did that have on Sluggish, your Sluggish, slow. You've got to remember, my body doesn't want to be a stone either. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not natural, it's not healthy. In Newcastle, Eddie Hearns of Matchroom Boxing. Yeah, but about seven pounds for me was perfect, because you're sort of sparring around 12 stone, mm. you know, a middleweight being 11 stone, six. Um, but yeah. Interesting when they were Our talking about their rehydration clause between Kelbrook and Amir Khan. And obviously, we know Kel is someone that is, is much drier than Khan is at 147. Khan wants to kind of fix a £10 limit on that fight if it were to happen. I think that might, do you think that might even play into Brooks' hands for you to be able to come into fight night under 157? Do you think that might be a healthy way for him? It's the same as the IBF. So, those who don't know, the IBF have a ruling that the next morning after the weigh in, uh, the morning after the weigh in, sorry, so the, the morning of fight night, you can't put more than £10 on. Mm. Uh, so he's basically using the IBF ruling. Uh, Brook has done it before, mm. but we see against Spence, you know, he it wasn't it wasn't full of energy no. like he usually is. No. You know what I mean, you know that though he was well beaten Tom against Golovkin, he looked strong, didn't he? he, did, yeah, you know, he was full of energy. It, yeah. um, it does play into uh, to Khan's hands certainly. That's why they've asked for it. Um, but I, I'm a little surprised if I'm honest. I'll just eight think, stone seven for Tran. Just eight make the weight and, and get the, get, you know, have the fight. I don't yeah. think they should have bothered with it because it, it shows a bit of uh, they're lacking in confidence slightly, mm. in my opinion. Because yeah. why on earth would you, would you do it? But anyway, look, it's done now. I just want to see the fight Ladies made. So gentlemen. if it means now doing that, then whatever it, takes, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. This gentleman has a perfect professional record, 24 and 0, three knockouts, fighting out of West Rainton County, Durham. The form, the British Super Bantamweight champion and the reigning defending undefeated IBF European Super Bantamweight champion, Thomas. Patrick Ward. Well, uh, he's a talented individual, is Ward. I mean, he really is a fantastic fighter. Well, on the Great fringe. record, and yeah, yeah, he's full of confidence himself. And like Eddie said at the press start, touching, you know, he's, he's, in the, he's in the world ranking. Nine stone for Closing in Patrick on Ward. potentially a world Nine title fight. So it's a big night for him, massive night for Ward. Seven or eight world champions at the moment, UK. I think oh, Rami, he's friendly, yeah. Sorry, I should, I should know. Well, I don't know either, <laughs> so don't worry. But it's, it's, either, it's either seven or eight. Yeah. Rocky Fielding, I think, was, was maybe the seventh. Oh, you know what? Because Callum Smith and George goes, the title never right. it, course, changed course, hands, course, so I think yeah, it is seven. Yeah, yeah. But point, point being is that, you know, you look at the likes of John Ryder, who we'll see in a couple of weeks' time. He's yeah. in a world title he's eliminator. Yeah. Um, now going to face um, off the fighters. Some of the guys here this weekend. That, that number could soar to 10 or 11 Ryan in the next 12 Radio months Arena. without without even being over-optimistic. That could just be a, that just be a realistic boxing. objective for us. Look, we're, we're, we're going to continue to win them, and I'm no doubt we'll continue to lose them. But, you know, the the strength of British boxing now is it, just getting better and better. And going back to the, the, the podium set-up, the GB set-up, it all stems from there. Mm. That's our foundations. You know, and with the talent, you know, with Cyrus Platt Jr., you know, what a fighter he is, yeah. you know, uh, and some of the other lads, lads, John Doherty, who's making Cormac his twins as well. Yeah, the Cormac twins, uh, but uh, John Doherty, who's making his yep. uh, debut tomorrow night, you know, the talent of fighters that we've got coming through is exceptional. Yeah, it really is, yeah, it really is. Well, Anthony Fowler, who will be boxing tonight, or tomorrow night, beg your pardon, he was kind of suggested maybe a late addition to the Wembley card yeah. two weeks ago but I just don't think there was enough time when they floated the option to him but he's another guy that never really goes right, way above his weight he's always in the gym he's always in really good shape um, contested at 12 stone or 168 pounds introducing first he's an eight fight veteran fighting out of Malaga Andalusia Spagna please welcome Alejandro Mostazo yeah, it does. It makes life Alejandro easier. Mostazo, come um, into the scales. Chris, when you do sort of, I mean, Carl Froch used to do it. He, used to, he would walk around about four pounds over wow. uh, the super middleweight limit, and he was strong as an ox. Whereas, yeah, he's, people have different approaches. You know, mm. it's so hard to not switch off after a fight because you've been training for you know 10, 12, 14 weeks. Mm. Your body naturally wants to put on some weight. Uh, some hold it better. Some, you know, it was a nightmare for me, honestly. Stone and half. He used, to, he used to really, really hurt. We spoke to um, Frank Doherty yesterday, Joe's dad, about yeah. that, that kind of uh, transition for him as well. One of the things in the amateurs that's so difficult is that although it was a couple of kilos heavier than, than the weight division he's going to be fighting in as a pro, the difficulty is you've got to hold that weight in, in competition for sometimes yeah. five days. And one of the problems he had in the Commonwealth Games, uh, he was at middleweight, got the, got the bronze medal. 
that he found that just holding that for five days, the first couple of bouts were okay, but then about three and four, right, he just felt like he had no energy. And obviously, this is a great thing about being a pro is you can, yeah. if you have to boil right down, you've only got to boil down for a matter of a few hours. Honestly, then tournaments when you're doing that, it's so difficult. Mm. I remember in the Commonwealth Games, uh, 63 and a half kilos I was, and like you say, you're holding again, for five rounds, days. You know, in the end, it night, starts taking its toll. Uh, but being pro, you, you bring it down gradually, you get to the way in. On about two stone. Go okay, again. Sports and exclusively in the United States on the zone. Jordan Latimer to the scales. Eleven stone six. Eleven stone six pounds for Latimer. Eleven stone six. My old limit. Eleven six. I don't think I'll be making that in any time soon. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to welcome to the scale. Tomorrow night, he'll be making his professional debut. He's a former Team GB member. He took bronze for Scotland after 2018 Commonwealth Games in Australia. Ladies and gentlemen, John the Doc Doherty. Well, here is the man that we've just been speaking about, John Doherty, the Scotsman making his debut tomorrow night. After a really successful summer bronze at the Commonwealth Games, I was speaking to his dad about it was a, it was a little surprising that he didn't stay the course for the Olympic cycle because he was the favourite at that way. He beat Ben Whitaker, who I think many people would agree is probably the number two at, at the weight category. Whitaker has now moved up to light heavyweight. Some other very, very talented boxers in there as well. Jordan Reynolds in the mix too. And I think maybe they just felt that there was no guarantee of, of Olympic selection, no guarantee of qualification. And even if you do qualify, we saw in Rio so many so many top guys getting difficult draws in the first round there's no guarantee of a medal either so they felt that in those two years they could do a heck of a lot of building and so he's turned over do you know what as well Chris I mean it's dreams and uh, and aspirations mm. and his may be in the pro game you know he might want to you know, he dreaming uh, like many of us boxers do, dreaming of winning titles as a professional, and that that may be the case with Doherty. You know, he just thought, you know, he's travelled the world, he medalled in the Commonwealth Games, a major tournament. He he just obviously felt the time was right, and uh, good luck to him. He's yeah. he's teamed up with Tony Sims, my old coach, who's a fantastic trainer, great man manager, and uh, I think. From what I hear from Tony, he's very excited about Doki. Well, you said to me, you know, Tony's a busy man these days, isn't he? And Tony doesn't really take on people. A little bit of needle there, but we got some big security boys to keep them uh, to keep the lads safe. Latimer Doherty, ball round super middleweights tomorrow night, Metro Radio Arena. That's what he said to me. He said Tony is, is a busy guy at the moment. He's yeah. got a busy stable with a lot of um, quite key fights coming up. He doesn't take people on lightly, no. and and he's kind of almost almost a closed door. And he really believes somebody's got the talent to to make it, and that says a lot about John Doherty. It does. It does indeed. When Tony said it to me, you know, he said this boy's okay, special. Uh, if he says it, he means it. He's very he's very honest, Tony. Uh, so yeah, so I'm looking forward to seeing him progress as a pro. There is uh, plenty of fights on, as we said. There's some good fights as well. Mm. A lot of names that a lot of the, the viewers might not have heard of. Mm. But let me tell you, they're very talented and uh, the matchmaking has been superb. I mean, they, they are great fights. We'll be live from 1 o'clock uh, tomorrow afternoon from the Metro Radio Arena. We've got... Mr. Dave Allen on the show, and I don't know, Dan, that I've ever seen anybody quite as relaxed and quite as... You would, you would never know <laughs> that he was right boxing. You would never know he was boxing, would you? He's a 55 fight veteran fighting out of Plymouth, Devon, Chris Attaway. Well, we've had, we'll have him on the show tomorrow. We've yeah. got Tom Do Crazy's always. Do not miss that. Oh, Do yeah. not miss that. It's Let me really tell special. you now, if you, <laughs> Dave Allen is very funny, and he, I've just found out he's ridiculously good with numbers he's like the rain man and I'm, we're yeah, going to casino tomorrow night yeah. <laughs> 10 stone dead 10 stone for Attaway not before the fight though Dan. no okay. not before yeah. the fight no. that, that'd be selfish <laughs> and now me. ladies and gentlemen this gentleman fighting out of Newcastle as a professional perfect 2-0 and oh, please welcome Terry Wilkinson Terry Wilkinson some uh, local support for Wilkinson Another one who looks focused. Also, ten stone dead for Wilkinson. 
Blue, thank you. Right, Davy. <laughs> We're going to get David Diamante himself on the show uh, for Usyk Bellew in four weeks' time because I tell you what, a lot of people are just sort of slightly uninitiated as to yeah, him, yeah. and they're seeing this guy with he hasn't had a haircut since 1988. Great story, he's in a tuxedo. Isn't it? He's one of the most charismatic, lovely men that you'd yeah. want to meet, isn't he? And he's got some great stories, and uh, be really, really good to kind of get him on, have a chat about him and his yeah. life. And he was there, of course, for, for Usyk's last two, two exactly. fights in the World Boxing Super Series. It's just a different uh, angle and a different. Uh, view of boxing you know being the MC he's done some huge fights like you say um, the final of the World Series and yeah he, um, he really is a cool guy he's uh, he's fun to be around and he'll be great on the show won't he yeah he absolutely will that way Wilkinson tomorrow night Metro Radio Arena I'm expecting some noise when we're seeing it's the scars, aren't you? I mean, it, it is filling up here. Yeah, a couple of a uh, couple of professional sprinters. I'm a little a little disappointed. I've not seen one Newcastle shirt, though. Have you I, not? No, I haven't seen. Well, actually, sorry, I can see one. One away. One away, one away, one away strip. Yeah, yeah. Ten round cruiserweight affair that's uh, contested at 14 stone, four pounds or 200 pounds. Introducing first to the stage and to the scale, eight and one, seven knockouts. Fighting out of Liverpool and representing the Four Corner Combat Gym, please welcome Craig, the Real Deal Glover. Oh, he looks a solid lump, doesn't he, Craig yeah. Glover? Yeah. Um, this is going to be a good fight. Both very confident. Uh, at the, stone, at the press conference. Ounces for the real deal, Craig Glover. Both uh, eight and one. Well, sorry, I said he wasn't there. Now, but ladies and gentlemen, stepping to the scales. Glover is very, very, very confident, really. Elite squad and Team GB podium squad. In 2010, he took gold in Delhi at the Commonwealth Games, and now as a professional, 13 and one, one draw, four knockouts from Middlesbrough, Yorkshire. Simon Valley. Well, I've just seen a couple of professional sprinters in the audience. James Ellington and Richard Kilty both competed at um, Olympic Games, Commonwealth Games, and I think both those yeah. middles were based. So a couple of his mates that he's given a nod to as well. Nice yeah. to see them up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Them, he's great. You know, the local support's been brilliant. It must be quite cool when you've got. I mean, as a big Chelsea fan, I know some of the players are your friends. And when you go up the ranks in your own your own 14, sport, 7, you see guys doing well. It must be good fun. I remember when Frank Lampard texted me. He got my number. I didn't know he had my number. And he texted me after one of the European title, and I was. I was buzzing, <laughs> you know, because you forget what you're doing as a boxer. And you I'm should have gone, you gone, how the hell did you get my number? Don't yeah, text yeah, me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, it was great. But like I was saying before, that's going to be a good fight. It was uh, Dave Allen who was talking up Valili, wasn't it? Saying he'd been sparring with him. That's right. Um, They're looking in monstrous shape, Ian. They're both looking in really, really good condition. Not enormous cruiserweights, has no, to be said. No, they're not. But they're I not. guess we're kind of getting used to some real monsters in that division now, especially Lawrence Okoli and Matty Askin, two of the real big men in the division. But well, even even Tony Bellew coming back down. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, go on, look at these two. A little bit of little bit of needle there. The Lily Glover tomorrow night, ladies and gentlemen. Ten rounds cruiserweights. Whew. That was spicy yesterday, wasn't it? Because, yeah. you know, it, it was a good, good bit of fun from Dave Allen, made everyone laugh, yeah. as he seems to do literally 24-7. But Glenn Foote just turned the spice levels up a little yeah, bit on Robbie did. Davis Jr. Didn't really seem to get under Robbie's skin too much. I think he probably knew there was going to be something like that. But nice that it had a little bit of everything this, and I think that sums up what, what we're going to see tomorrow night. Likeable bunch of fans, likeable bunch of fighters, really spicy fights, and just a great atmosphere. 50-50s. Uh, obviously, Ritson is, is a huge favour, but going down the card, there are some 50-50 fights, and yeah, I mean, um, I, I, I'm really looking forward to it, and I'm not just saying that, you know, mm. uh, the the Glenn Foot, Robbie Davis Jr. Is, is one I'm looking forward to because you know what you're going to get. Robbie Davis Jr. said it at the press conference; he's going to have the kitchen sink thrown at him. He he he's, he knows what's going to come his way, mm. uh, but that brings excitement. 
you know, it's up to Robbie Davis Jr. Then what does he do? Does he box try and move? Well, it was interesting because against Mikhail Sirovaka in the second fight, having really kind of just been a little bit too macho, probably too macho for his own good in that yeah. first contest. Ladies and even though he was ahead going into the 12th round, round, he got stopped. And I think he probably looked at that and thought, didn't need to do that. And in the second fight, he actually showed a lot more maturity. Box probably 80 percent of it south for. But Glenn Foot, you're gonna have to earn that respect early on because if you don't, remember seeing Glenn Foot for the first time live against Phil Bowes for the English title at your call. Probably only 18 months ago and Bo's very very slick Sample, oh. very skillful but I'm sure you wouldn't mind me saying he's not a heavy puncher he's a pot shot mover and and Glenn just didn't earn Glenn's respect from the first bell and as a result he was just all over him for 12 rounds yeah, and kind yeah. of just mauled him and out and outworked him and Robbie's just needs to be careful doesn't he that snap happened to him tomorrow night yeah yeah that's exactly right and I would I would say for Robbie Davis Jr as well when you've got someone coming forward that much I wouldn't like to see him switch as much as he does. Yeah. You know, stay 16, in his strongest stance and, and try and land the big backhand shot to try and keep foot off. Nebo. Sam Nebo and, and Dave Allen talking of no needle at all. There's no needle at all here. <laughs> He's actually his translator. Has a professional record of 14 wins, four defeats, two draws, and 11 big wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Connorsbro. He is the Doncaster de la Hoya, the Sock, the White Rhino, David. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the pants. <laughs> oh, they are, so we, they I came are down this morning and he was having a he was having a cup of tea in, in the bar and I sat with him for an hour and I haven't I haven't laughed that much in a long time. He said he was going to come in about 18.5. He said he said his optimum is about 17.5. He's a stone over that. <laughs> Ten rounds heavyweights tomorrow night here in Newcastle. Gold pants. What a cheer he's going to get tomorrow. What a cheer he's going to get. You cannot like not not like. Dave Allen. No. I mean, he's such a character, such a nice guy, and like you say, you only got to spend a bit of time with him, and he will have you in pieces. Well, the room, the room was yeah. in stitches uh, last uh, night, you know. Uh, it's honestly, he's hilarious. There he goes. He's clearly bought those for the occasion, is not he? So he weighed at 18.5. He says 17.5 <laughs> is about his optimum. So he's about stone over that, and I know that you would like to see him just come in as trim as possible when he kind of. If he steps up and has a big one, he's got to get back in that kind of shape we saw him for Lenroy exactly, Thomas rematch. Exactly. And I, I just want to see him, you know, and he's saying it himself, he's taking it more serious. And we want to see that because mm. though he, he, he's a great, he has a great personality, he's great fun. <laughs> he, he's got All potential. Right. He out. really has. Ten rounds heavyweights tomorrow night. Allen and Nebo here in Newcastle Metro Radio Arena. There we go. Dave Allen and Sammy Nebo tomorrow night at heavyweight. Boatsy, Ritson, Fowler still to go. Who else? Well, Fowler, I think I can see him in the crowd here actually. His opponent now, has missed his flight. So I think he's weighing in tomorrow now. Uh, he's Andy Fowler. Right. Which, that's a nightmare. If you just want to get out on the scouts, you've got to wait at next for days. Although, for somebody like Fowler, I would say if it's going to be anybody. Anthony Fowler is a perfect person because he never ever sits too high above his weight. He doesn't blow up on fight night. Yeah, he always sits around that he's three or four pounds over. So for him, if anybody's going to have to deal with that, you, you would prefer it to be uh, yeah. someone like Anthony Fowler. Well, here's Josh Watts, his opponent. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage. He is undefeated as a professional. 7-0 with five knockouts, originally from Accra, Ghana, and now living and fighting out of Croydon, London. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2016 Olympic bronze medalist and the reigning, defending, undefeated WBA international light heavyweight champion, Joshua Buatsi. Now to the scale, ladies and gentlemen, Tony Avalon. The well, one thing you can't question about Tony Avalan is that he's not afraid to take a challenge. He's taken on Anthony Arden Boazzi within three fights of each other. And to be honest, those are not easy guys mm. to match. Yeah. Boazzi, as we know, very, very hard to get him fights because people kind of say they want to box him, but actually they don't want to get anywhere near him. Anthony Arden, another dangerous operator, very heavy-handed. But Tony Avalan, credit to him, he's taken both guys without any, any uh, worries. He's a fighter, isn't he? He's a fighter. Boazzi! And... Uh, He's quite good, this guy, isn't he? <laughs> he's all right, yeah. <laughs> he's, uh, he's some talent. Probably, arguably, the best talent we have, you know, coming through. I think he might have heard you say that as well. We're just talking about some of the best Singing talents. Singing your praises, mate. Singing your praises. Yeah. 
On 74.8, it looks Most like there. Six pounds, 13 ounces Bang for on. the undefeated WBA international light heavyweight champion, Joseph. And Kowalski. even if he rehydrates, wants to be in the hair come off, he'll probably weigh less tomorrow night. Newcastle <laughs> yes. at the Metro Radio Arena, and it's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearns at Matchroom Boxing. Broadcast live exclusively here in the UK on Sky Sports and in America on DAZN. We're now going to face off the fighters. So much confidence with Boetsy as well, and you know, and he. He sort of relishing, relishes that, uh, but he doesn't call it pressure as such. You know, he, he understands that he's a talented fighter and there's going to be these sort of comparisons made. I, I pointed out yesterday that people are comparing him to a young Amanda Holyfield. Everyone, I mean, what, Pulaski, 10 rounds, what, a, WBA, what a compliment that is. But he's, he's not phased about any of no, that kind of indeed. stuff, the hyperbole, the, the praise, the, the fame. He's just in the gym grafting, very little on social media. Yeah. He's, he's living the life that he's going to have to live if he wants to get to the level that we all believe he can get to. I mean, look, you just got to, he has that strong uh, faith. Mm. Uh, and he, uh, he truly believes with God by his side he can go all the way but he, he, you know he, his ability he does everything so well he's got quick hands he punches so hard there's there's a rawness to him as well mm. that I like it's, it's a bit of dog in him isn't it yeah there is you know he's a great the, uh, finisher um, he's just he, he, Division, he's the best stone, we've got I think coming through and it's interesting pounds. as well because when we look at the kind of I think Rob Tebbett from Boxing Social described the light heavyweight division he said it's like a murderer's row if you start the likes of Marcus Brown in the States Vodzic and then you go up to sort of Sullivan Barrera Donna Stevenson Sergei Kovalev Dimitri Bivol Arta Baturbiev I mean flipping it you're talking about 10 guys guys there that could hold a world title yeah but obviously there are only four available and I think of all of our guys we saw how well Callum Johnson did against Viterbia but long term obviously Callum Johnson is, is no spring chicken anymore but Josh has got his best years ahead of him yeah. you would have to say he's by far our, our best chance of taking on I, some of those guys I asked you a question yesterday uh, about something and you, uh, it was and something now, to do with Bratzi. And, and you said, when he wins his second world title. <laughs> he's so you're confident. Yeah. You're confident. Yeah. As a professional undefeated, two fights, two victories, both victories by knockout, the Benwell, <laughs> from Benwell, Newcastle, Joe Lawless. Got a bit of Rey Mysterio on the scales today. He's outdone Dave Allen with the uh, outfit. <laughs> I didn't think that was possible. Well, Our, what, um, we, we keep talking about it, but a thousand tickets sold, yeah. hand delivered as well. David, uh, David Diamante would have enjoyed that. He's got his own cigar. cigar um, he might have lent bar, it to him. He, 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 he is, may yeah. have. He's got his own cigar bar in uh, Brooklyn, hasn't he? Yeah. We've just seen Cyrus Pattinson going up to the escalators. It's really, oh, right. really busy now. We'll have him on the show tomorrow. GB Welterweight uh, on the podium squad from the Northeast as well. Um, great to see Joseph Laws. Can you believe thousand hand delivered tickets? I mean, get it right, get it right. Nine hundred and eighty, nine eighty, nine eighty. Was he was twenty short, wasn't he? But <laughs> no, it's incredible. Yeah, it's incredible. I mean, it, it does help. It does help. Uh, Put pressure on himself to perform, though, right? Yeah, but. He obviously enjoys it, or you wouldn't sell the tickets. <laughs> it's very true. Yeah, it's very, very true. And a big performance from him. Could just see him step up a, a stage as well. Lots of Truman. His opponent looks strong, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. He does. There's no, there's no care or concern. You know, he doesn't seem too worried. We can't really... Do you, ever, do you ever have any weird no. face-offs or any I'll, strange... No, I was, was too boring. Four rounds to be <laughs> I had nothing Lawless about me. <laughs> Truman here in Newcastle. So I think now we are moments away from the main event weigh-in. Francesco Patera and Lewis Ritson fighting for the vacant European lightweight title that Patera has held before, remember. So we know we can yeah. mix it out that he's level. Good. Okay, he's he's a good fighter. We're going to go ahead and bring up our chief supporting act right now. 12 rounds of boxing schedule for the Commonwealth and vacant British super lightweight championship. Contested at 10 stone or 140 pounds. Introducing first to the stage, ladies and gentlemen, 16 and 1, 12 knockouts, fighting out of Kirby, the reigning WBA Continental Super Lightweight Champion, Robbie Davis Jr. 
Well, I'm expecting some needles. And now, ladies and gentlemen, coming to from the stage. From a psychological game plan from Glenn Foot, there's no way he'll just let this let no, this no, no, go no, no, quietly. Fighting out of Marley Potts, Sunderland, the former English and reigning Commonwealth Super Lightweight Champion, the Westside Warrior, Glenn Foot. Yeah, I told you. It, they mean now business. The they mean business. Look at Glenn Foot's face. Wow. Glenn Foot that is the in the zone. Yeah. <laughs> He's in the zone. We heard there from the Marley Potts area of Sunderland and was talking to, to Dave Allen about it and he said, you know, one of one of the toughest areas in the country to be brought up. We know he was attacked with a machete a couple of years ago. He's grown up fighting on the streets. That's the kind of area you're going to just be a tough, tough man. And he's not afraid of a fight. And a lot of away support for him as well I know he's on the other side of, of this but this is kind of almost that local yeah. derby isn't they, it the, the, the team were calling for you know the North Beast to get behind him yeah. so to get rid of that divide between Sunderland and Newcastle Nine, and 12, it seems like they've, uh, they've managed, four, managed to do it 8 ounces for Glenn Foot Marley Pass Sunderland Glenn Foot it's a, it's a tough one to call that fight you know we talk about 50-50s I really do think it's a 50-50 fight mm -hmm. and uh, you know you hear it all the time Styles make fights I think for that one it they're going to gel I really do think they're going to gel and like we said before with Glenn Foot, you know what you're going to get you get in the kitchen well, sink it seemed yesterday like Glenn was trying to just goad Robbie into having a, a trade with him and we know that David Junior's probably got an, an, a couple of extra sets of tools in the locker than Glenn because we know yeah, what Glenn yeah, does yeah. And, and Robbie's not going to want to just play into his hands he's going to have to move at some point pick his shots but I think Glenn would just love it to be centre of the ring you know, four foot by four foot ring and just go at it. But it wouldn't be sensible for Robbie to do that in terms of getting the decision. The, the, the game plan is is quite simple, really. You know, move. Don't want to get back onto the ropes. Yeah. But you want to be taking half a step back from the centre of the ring and move back round, back to the centre of the ring. You know, it's quite a simple game plan, as is foot. Well, you can see the security behind them just already on standby because yeah. I think they know that there's potential for maybe a little shove or something here. Glenn Foot wishes the fight was a down, I'm telling you. <laughs> he just wants to get in there. Well, Davis looks in really, really good shape. Here we go. Mm. Well, good job we haven't got microphones on them. Yeah, I think so. Uh, a couple of them words begin with the uh, letter F. At the Metro Radio Arena here in Newcastle. Well, Robbie seems to uh, have enjoyed that. Could almost be a headliner in itself, that one. What a treat it's going to be. Yeah, I mean, uh, as, a, as a chief support, that is a, it's a blinder. Mm. And uh, look, we, we like a bit of needle, didn't we? You know, if it's done in a uh, good, good heart, it's not nasty, we like it. Tomorrow night. Please welcome to the stage 12 rounds for the vacant EBU European Lightweight Championship. Introducing first to the stage, he's the former Belgian European and WBC Mediterranean champion, 19 to 3 with seven knockouts, fighting out of Belgium, Francesco Patera. Well, Patera. Not, not to show off, Chris, I've got a couple of them blue belts. Have you? <laughs> yes, I uh, won a European twice. I won it. Then got injured and, now, <laughs> and then fought for it again. So I got two of them. To the stage. His professional record, a perfect one 17 0, 11 wins by knockout. Fighting out of Forest Hall, Newcastle. The reigning, defending, undefeated British lightweight champion, the Sandman, Lewis Ritson. Well, for Lewis Ritson, if he wins tomorrow night, it will be his first now, European yeah, title. For Patera, it would be his second. Of course, beat Edith Satley and then lost it in the rematch. But both of these guys, mm. this is kind of crunch time for them in terms of moving on to and then surpassing European level. They're Chris, both each they're other's so test. close, mate. They're so close. You know, you win the European, you're automatically in the top 10 of all the governing bodies. As I, I think I'm right there. In saying, um, eight pounds, three so they're very close, mate. They're, they're Patera, so close uh, nine, to a, a, a potential crack at a world, and now, world and child. Stepping the scale, the undefeated Forest Hall Newcastle. Please welcome the Sandman, Lewis Ritson. Well, that's interesting. Maybe he just weighed in this morning a little bit over and knows he's got to get right down to the bone, which he is. Yeah. 
Provided he makes the weight, then that's okay. too much into that if I'm honest Chris um, he didn't look drawn he didn't look he didn't look bad on the weight there it's just you know sometimes you want to time it perfectly and sometimes it takes taking your pants off um, well he's instantly just having a few sips of his drink yeah and, and again I never really struggled I'd have to lose a fair bit of weight, but it was never really a struggle. And Tony would always make me drink something straight away. I'd always try and disguise it because I didn't want my opponent thinking I was dehydrated yeah. or, or... Well, that's what happened with Robbie and, Robbie and Glenn yesterday, wasn't it? Robbie said, oh, I ever heard your camp yeah. saying, don't let them see you, see you doing this, don't well, see well, you doing What that. it can do, it can give you a psychological win. Mm. You think, well, if it does go later, uh, you know, he's going to tire, he's going to start fatiguing. So there they are then. Such European. a laid-back, calm uh, personality, Ritson, hasn't he? Yes. Such a lovely lad. That's the other thing. A lot of the fighters this week, outside of, yeah. outside of Robbie and Glenn, <laughs> yeah, yeah. everyone, Boatsy, Dave yeah. Allen, Fowler, they're all just relaxed and chill, but we know they're going to be explosive performances tomorrow night. This is going to be no different. Patero just looks pretty cool and calm. Be really good. Just excited now to see what Ritson's got to offer, just the level above what he's been doing, because he's made it look so easy, and you almost want to see somebody just test them a little bit in all fairness, I've never seen this sort of uh, this sort of stare down from Ritson. I mean, he didn't want to take his eyes off of Patera then, nor did Patera. That, that was interesting. I think, I think uh, Lewis Ritson understands what a big occasion this is and how close he is to a massive, massive fight. I mean, don't get me wrong, this is a huge fight. Uh, winning the European title is, is a great achievement, but... You know, the ultimate goal is is winning a world crown, and he's so close. He really is so close. Mm. What would you like to see him do if he wins comfortably tomorrow night? A defence or uh, go I, straight I, to French level? No, do you know what? I, I would, I would. Doesn't necessarily have to be a defence, but uh, a fighter of that calibre, whether it's a European opponent or or he fights a, a, a tough American, almost uh, or, or, almost um, a gatekeeper type opponent mm. someone who's on the fringes or you know after you get beat that opponent then it's the world champion someone just before you what know about, what about an Ivan Mendy even Mendy what a fight that yeah, would be even Mendy I mean that would be a good fight uh, beating, it should be a matchmaker well <laughs> I don't know about that they were Paul Reddy works his socks off here no, but I tell you what that would be that that is great matchmaking because Mendy comes to fight doesn't he he holds the center of the ring as does Ritson um, yeah so, someone of that caliber you know, someone like that, you know, because there's no doubt, in my opinion, Luke Campbell will, will go on to win a world yeah. title. I think he's got the ability to do it so close against Nolares and Mendy pushed him, well, beat him and then pushed him so close. Mm. Yeah, I mean, the future's very bright if, if you're Ritson, but he's got to take care of Patera tomorrow night. Got to take care of business, absolutely. But before that, we'll be live at the Metro Radio Arena at 1 o'clock tomorrow for our show Before the Bell. We'll have Cyrus Pattinson on, GB69 Kilo Boxer, his agent Charlie Sims. Uh, we'll have Dave Allen on the show Dave as well. Allen. Tom Craze will be talking us through the odds. So join us tomorrow, Matchroom Boxing Social Media, live from the Metro Radio Arena from 1 o'clock. Thanks for your company, guys, and we'll see you there.